Here's another knife I got from CRKT, the Persian folder. And it's easily one of the most beautiful folding knives I've seen so far. Some really attractive curves here. Hmm, that's what he said. Anyway, it's especially nice with this overall S-shaped curve, reminiscent of a scimitar or shamshir. Hence the name, I assume. And for how luxurious it looks, it's really pretty cheap. You can find it for about 30, 35 dollars. And it looks like a much more expensive knife when you look at it. And either way, it does use some pretty good materials for the price range. The uh, blade is 8CR14 MOV, which uh, people seem to agree on is comparable to AUS8, which is a pretty good steel, performs well. It does depend on the uh, heat treat of the individual knife, but uh, overall it seems quite a decent steel, which takes a very keen edge and is fairly easy to resharpen and uh, also has quite good edge retention. I'll comment more on that, but uh, let's take a look at the uh, handle first. It's uh, G10 handle scales, which again is very nice to see on a fairly inexpensive knife. And the uh, frame here, the liner, is 420J2 and it appears to be anodized, which gives it this nice uh, golden finish. Looks really neat, as you can tell. It's a frame lock, which is good for such a small knife. Gives it a little bit of uh, extra strength. has a pretty small thumb stud right here that I'm not fond of at all, I have to say, because it makes the opening the knife unnecessarily difficult. i just show you it's... Uh, it does protrude a little bit, but it's just a bit too small in my opinion. And also the way it is shaped, it's not very pleasant on the thumb, really. It has a tendency to dig into the thumb and really doesn't feel all that good. And also it's it's not particularly easy to open, especially at first. I've broken this one in here, so it's not that big of a deal anymore. But at first it was really kind of hard to actually get it to open. Sometimes when you get get in from the wrong angle it's still somewhat difficult. I've actually gotten the habit of just opening it in kind of a weird way. I push against it with the nail on my index finger and then flick it open like that. That seems kind of the most comfortable way to open it to me. And uh, this is also one of my criticisms, that it's not that easy or quick to deploy. But uh, in terms of ergonomics, I have absolutely no complaint about it. It's, uh, it's a fairly simple overall shape here with the handle. But um, <clears throat> the um, G10 feels great. And those kind of wavy grooves definitely help give it a lot of traction without being uncomfortable in any way. Also has a lot to offer in terms of just pure aesthetics. And of course, being slightly curved towards the end, that gives you a little bit more to hold on to, like prevents you from uh, slipping down a lot. I mean, it's not like this is a heavy use knife, so it doesn't matter all too much, but it's still quite nice the way it uh, kind of locks in your hand. It's really comfortable. And secure. So I quite like that. 
It's uh, there's no guard of any description here, so you do have to be a bit careful about slipping up there. But again, you have these grooves right here, which add a little bit of traction. And if you hold it properly, it's really not an issue. There is no jimping here whatsoever, but in my opinion, it's not necessary. The way you, uh, if you grip it like this, it's pretty firm in your hand. It's not going to move anywhere. So uh, yeah, again, like I said, it's not a heavy duty knife. It's more for light cutting tasks. And uh, I have used it as an EDC knife over the past weeks. It has become one of my favorites pretty quickly, simply because of the excellent ergonomics. I find myself picking this up whenever I have something to cut in the house. It's, uh, yeah, this one is always the one where I go, oh, let's, let's go for that, just because it's nice. <laughs> um, there is one issue that I have with the blade, namely, uh, let me get nice and close here. There is a tiny, tiny chip right here in the edge. It's, it's really small. It's not that noticeable at all. It's not a big deal and it's fairly easy to fix by just grinding the edge a little bit. But um, I'm still kind of worried about that because I really didn't use it for that many you know, heavy materials. I did cut uh, some cardboard boxes and of course cardboard is always kind of hard on it. That's also where I assume that this happened. There, there might have been some debris in the cardboard that uh, was pretty harsh on it. And it has held up quite well. The edge retention I have no issue with whatsoever. Let me just show you the exact way as it came out of the box. And this is after my use so far. It's still perfectly sharp. So uh, as you can see, it's, it still cuts very effortlessly, very cleanly. So uh, this is quite nice. I mean, like I said, I haven't used it on a lot of really tough material. But uh, I have used it for what this is, in my opinion, intended for. Light, everyday, cutting duty. Uh, it performs admirably. It's uh, still really, really nice and sharp. Keeps the edge well. It's uh, really just that one chip. Which, I don't know why that is. There might be... <sighs> you never know. It might be that this particular one doesn't have ideal heat treatment. Or it may just be what sometimes happens when you have whatever kind of random debris and uh, nasty stuff in cardboard, which is why it's not that good to cut with a fine knife like this. I shouldn't have, but in any case, it's there. So it's it may not be the most durable steel, but it sure holds an edge very well and you can sharpen it to really, really a nice fine edge. The fact that the blade has a hollow grind also helps improve the uh, cutting performance. And uh, I have no issue with that. It really cuts very well. As always, you'll find the measurements like length and weight and all of that down there in the video description. And uh, my overall impression of this knife is very positive. This is pretty much the perfect gentleman's knife for me. It just looks extremely nice very elegant. It doesn't have a belt clip, but uh, it doesn't need to. It's a very light knife. You can easily carry it just in your pocket. It doesn't need a clip, and in my opinion, a clip would kind of ruin the look. So it is appropriate that it doesn't have one, in my opinion. And uh, it's just extremely nice looking. Yeah, I know, I've already said that, but I just really like the overall aesthetics. And I'm also a big fan of how it handles. It's, uh, yeah, really, like I said, the only thing that I do not like is that it's not that easy to deploy with this 
a tiny little thumb stud there. I would really love for it to have a flipper, also because the flipper would act as a small guard, which again, like I said, it's not technically necessary, but it's always nice to have one as an additional safety feature. And I think it would also add to the overall look. So a flipper would just make this absolutely perfect, in my opinion. As you can tell, definitely one of my personal favorites. I'm a bit annoyed by the chip in the edge there, but uh, otherwise, I've not had a bad experience with it at all. Especially considering that if you can get it for, say, $32, $33, something like that, that's one hell of a deal for such a nice looking gentleman's knife. So before I ramble too much, hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.